Today I want to talk about Saturn. Saturn correlates with structure, effort, time, discipline, tradition, duty, authority. Wherever there's talk of putting on your big boy pants or your big girl pants, Saturn's in the room. Saturn transits can often be difficult periods in our life where we feel stuck or blocked and that things are, are, are not advancing as we want them to or we have to do more work than we'd like to get where we want to be. Um, Saturn also relates to the material world and therefore to manifestation and the realization of potential. Where Saturn falls in our charts, this is an area that becomes particularly important. Uh, it looms large in our consciousness because it's a place where we particularly want to, to make something real. And we're really called to do that in that area of our chart. Um, you know, so this naturally, because it's so important to us, it becomes a place where, where we're aware of our own deficiencies and, uh, Consequently, you know, we feel fear uh, or we may feel damaged or inadequate um, uh, <clears throat> and we can experience blockages. Um, nothing in Saturn's domain comes easily. You know, it, it all takes effort. Uh, but with the right effort comes a deepening and a maturation, you know, that we could... Um, we could liken it to, to like the uh, maturation of a wine or a cheese or the ripening of a fruit. Um, some of Saturn's most problematic dimensions, though, come through judgment and social expectation and loneliness and depression. Um, Saturn corresponds to the archetype of the father, which uh, is a force of discipline and authority and duty and expectations. The positive side of the father archetype is a wise, guiding, empowering energy that says, you can do it, I know you can, here's how, now go do it. The negative side is a punishing, harsh type of energy that says, you're never good enough, you'll never be able to do it, I always knew you were a piece of shit, yeah. Um, you know, and, and this is uh, distinct from the mother archetype, which is a, an archetype, uh, that on the one hand, you know, brings in the energies of, of nurturance and compassion and, and unconditional love, but on the other, uh, you know, can be smothering and devouring and unwilling to let you kind of be your own person in the world. Um, now, as with all of the archetypes, you know, the father and Saturn more broadly, um, can can express in an in infinite number of ways and are by no means limited to literal fathers or even men though the patriarchy and men and many many literal fathers in the world are are carriers of this archetype for sure in both the positive and the negative uh, dimensions um, but we could just as easily experience this sort of archetype through our biological mothers, um, just as we could experience it through uh, through teachers or, or or other adults when we're children, um, uh, or politicians or religious leaders. Um, in any case, you know, um, this wherever this energy comes from we're most likely at first to experience it coming to us from the outside as a systems of should, as a system of shoulds and oughts. You know, this is when you're a kid and, and the adults know the way the world works and, and they, they tell you that and you take it in. Um, you know, so it comes to us from our parents and teachers and, and preachers and, um, politicians and, and even from our friends, you know, if you think of peer pressure, um, and even on into adulthood, you know, people want to fit in with their social group. Um, so, you know, some of us never really make it past this stage of Saturn. Uh, this is where Saturn lives for us. You know, it's, it's social expectation. Do we meet it or don't we? Um, you know, and along with that too comes uh, 
the development of an inner critic and an inner judge, you know, the voice within that, that, that is constantly assessing what other people might think. Um, but, but, but after a while it just takes on a life of its own and, and, you know, it's, what do I think of me? And, um, and it's just a, a voice that can go on repeat telling you how bad you are and how you'll never succeed and, and never be good enough. Um, so problematic aspects of Saturn, there most definitely are, uh, but there is no escaping Saturn. As with all of the archetypes, these are, are uh, you know, unconditional realities. Uh, they, they just exist and uh, we have to face them one way or another. Um, now, Saturn's nature is not to be fun. You know, that's Jupiter's job, but Saturn's no fun. And it, with Saturn, it's work any way you cut it. Um, now, a really important thing to, in, in moving on to another stage of one Saturn uh, relationship to this archetype is, is kind of redefining uh, what authority means um, and, and relocating it from without to within. Um, now, in doing this, uh, we may have to face some harsh judgments about ourselves coming from outside and also from within, you know, and we may elicit negative reactions from people. We may behave in ways that let people down or let ourselves down. Um, it can be a very painful thing, but often at Saturn times, you know, during Saturn transits, uh, or if Saturn is pronounced in our birth charts, uh, we are kind of called to do this. Uh, either that or merely submit uh, to, to other people's expectations. Um, so either way, there's going to be a price to be paid. You know, with Saturn, you either succumb to social expectations, which is its own kind of price, which I, I think is, is a steeper price in the long run and really is only living half a life, or, you know, standing on one's own authority, which might be a steeper price up front, but, but in the long run, I think leads to better outcomes. Um, so, you know, the, the, the price that you may have to pay up front is loneliness and isolation and misunderstanding uh, or even punishment. Um, you know, but in doing so, you come face to face with yourself, with that inner critic on the inside, and hopefully are able to move through it, at which point you find that, that, that you know, the, the expectations that other people have of you um, really weren't as serious as you thought that they were. You know, people often end up showing themselves to be more forgiving than you expected them to be. Um, and, and that, you know, really, truly the worst critic and the worst judge is right inside. Um, now, because Saturn is a difficult archetype to, to work with, um, we can easily fall into a trap of, of kind of dealing with this archetype in extreme ways, you know, and oscillating between, on the one hand, um, submission and resignation, and then on the other, just empty, meaningless rebellion. Um, and this can perpetu perpetuate a, a sort of shame spiral and keep a person locked in a kind of slave mentality for their lives. Um, so I think that um, we can shed some light on these dimensions of Saturn by looking at the signs of Capricorn and Aquarius, which are the two traditional, um, traditionally Saturn-ruled signs. Though the modern ruler of Aquarius is, is Uranus. Um, so now Capricorn is the sign that's most associated with tradition and social status and hierarchy and duty and integrity um, and achievement. So social expectation and the eyes of the world loom very large with Capricorn. Now, um, now uh, Aquarius, uh, you know, the next sign in the Zodiac is the sign of the rebel you know, the utopian and the exile. Aquarius seeks to establish a true individuality by defying social convention. 
So where, where Capricorn is traditional and conservative, Aquarius is progressive and concerned with, with uh, you know, forging a new kind of society, uh, you know, one of and for individuals. Um, now, each of these signs has, has, uh, has very positive dimensions. Um, you know, tradition and structure exist for a reason. They help society cohere, and they help meaning to deepen over time. Just as uh, you know, rebellion is sometimes needed to to renew things that are that are old and stale and outworn and oppressive. Um, but you know, these also have very strong negative dimensions as well. And and Capricorn, you you know, can become a slave to tradition um, or a slave to social expectation. Uh, and duty uh, and Aquarius, you know, can just give itself over to to meaningless, uh, empty rebellion, you know, for no constructive purpose. Um, you know, with Capricorn, we can see conformity to the worst kind of patriarchal, conservative structures, and then with Aquarius, we can see an alternate kind of conformity that you sometimes see with like punks and anarchists. Who all have the same sort of tattoos and piercings uh, and kind of self-govern through shame and ostracism. Um, so, uh, you know, I think oscillation with Saturn is not the key, and ultimately, the key with Saturn is to is to turn within and embrace some of the the loneliness and times of isolation and even depression that may arise in order to move your soul in that direction. Um, ultimately with Saturn, it's about responsibility and authority, you know, but it's responsibility to whom and whose authority. So I think it's important with Saturn to kind of sit down and, and hammer out the details of your contract. Um, that can be a difficult thing to do, but I think it's one of the most worthwhile endeavors that there is. So I hope that this was helpful and uh, I will talk to you next time. Thanks.